The world of PC gaming was changed forever on November 8th, 2006 when Nvidia released their 8800 GTX. This card would change PC video gaming forever as it catapulted Nvidia decisively into first place in a graphics card race with ATI by making the fastest graphics card in the world. In early 2006, the graphics card scene was heating up, with both the release of Nvidia's 7000 series GPUs and ATI's release of the X1900 XT series, both companies were trading blows. And in early 2006, ATI took a commanding lead with its flagship card, the ATI Radeon X1900 XTX. It was faster than any single GPU solution Nvidia had to offer, and by a lot. ATI's lead lengthened in the fall of 2006 when they released their first ever GDDR4 card based off of the same architecture, the X1950 and the X1950 XT. This lead in performance was very short-lived as Nvidia had something up their sleeve, and only two months later in early November of 2006, Nvidia dropped a bombshell. The 8800 GTX. At the time of release, the 8800 GTX was between 60 to 100% faster than the fastest card ATI could offer. This would start the four year reign of Nvidia being the graphics king until the introduction of the HD 5000 series by AMD. The 8800 GTX was released at a price of $650, making it by far the most expensive graphics card in the market at the time, over $200 more expensive than Radeon's most expensive single GPU solution. But it was $200 more card as well. The 8800 GTX was based off of the new DirectX 10 capable Tesla microarchitecture and the new G80 GPU die, with a massive for the time 128 CUDA cores at a blistering 1350 MHz shader clock and a core clock of 575 MHz. This card could tackle any game at the time with ease. In addition, this card had an absolutely massive for the time frame buffer of 768 megabytes of GDDR3 with a 384-bit memory bus. It's no big surprise this card could play older titles at older resolutions just fine. But what about newer games at newer resolutions? How will the card fare now? Well, there's only one way to find out. So I put this old card on my test bench and ran it through its paces. The first game we tested was Rocket League. At the full 1080p quality preset, we had a very enjoyable experience. With an average of over 30 FPS, VSync can run smoothly. The frame rate reached as high as 52 and only ever dipped down to 25 when all sorts of particle effects were on screen. This card wasn't ever designed for such high textures, yet it still handles it like a champ. Battlefield 3 ran great as well at 1080p medium settings. Although we are limited to playing older Battlefields as this isn't DirectX 11 capable, it still plays it quite well. With a 34 FPS average, it's perfectly adequate, especially considering how old the card is. This card would be capable of much higher frame rates at a slightly lower resolution such as 1600 by 900. Grand Theft Auto V ran great at 720p. With medium to high settings, we got a 32 FPS average with it reaching as high as 46 while flying and only ever dipped down to 22 when the screen was filled with all sorts of explosions and particle effects. To put this performance into perspective, it's nearly as fast as the GF108 version of the GT730 at these particular settings, which is really quite impressive considering that this card is 8 years older and that the GT730 has the advantage of being able to use DirectX 11. The next game we benchmarked was a little bit older, it was Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. This would have been one of the games that this card would have played when it was initially released. This game still looks great today and at the maximum settings at 1080p, the 8800 GTX plays it with ease. With an average of well over 80 FPS and a minimum that never dropped below 60, you would have an incredible, uncompromised gaming experience. The last game we benchmarked was World of Warships. Based off of the Big World gaming engine, you should get similar performance in other popular titles like World of Tanks and the cancerous World of Warplanes. And at 1080p medium settings, the 8800 GTX plays this eSport title with ease with an average of 52 FPS. It only ever dipped down to 38 when sending shells into orbit while in sniper mode. And when just sailing around the ocean, we got a great max of 61. 
Even today, over 10 years since its release, the NVIDIA 8800 GTX can still hold its own. It may be dated, it may not be able to run DirectX 11, 12, or Vulkan, it may not thrive at higher resolutions, but it can still put up a fight. More importantly, it changed the graphics industry, drove graphics innovation in both games and hardware, and it opened up a new frontier for high-end GPUs that laid the groundwork for over four years of NVIDIA dominance in the GPU market. I may not have a special connection to this card like I do my 8800 GTS, but I will always respect it for what it did to the industry. And for that reason, it deserves a special place on my shelf, but more importantly, a special place in history. <laughs>